Right, in today's video we're going to have a little bit of fun with circuits. And uh, this circuit that I built up here on the breadboard is in response to a question I had from a friend about uh, how to build a adjustable sawtooth generator. Basically a circuit that could generate a sawtooth waveform that can vary from a you know, kind of a symmetrical triangle to something with a steep rising edge or a steep falling edge and also being able to vary the frequency while at the same time you know, keeping the amplitude constant. And uh, so I built it up on the bench here. Uh, we'll take a look at some waveforms here in a moment. But um, uh, there's some interesting sub-circuits that are part of this circuit. And I thought it would be a, a nice uh, circuit to use for a tutorial. Uh, we use some current sources. We use uh, some diodes in a bridge configuration as a switch. And uh, we'll also use a comparator with hysteresis. So, uh, so we'll talk all about uh, what that is and how this is all how this all goes together. So a little bit of theory here first. Kind of the underlying principle with this is that uh, a linear voltage ramp will occur on a on a capacitor when a constant current is used to charge or discharge a capacitor. Uh, so if we have essentially a constant current and a you know fixed value capacitor, if we have you know charge being pushed onto a capacitor, the voltage on the capacitor will increase linearly. And the slope of that line will simply be equal to the current divided the current value divided by the capacitance value in volts per second. And if we remove charge off a capacitor, the slope would just go the other way, you know, uh, using that same relationship. So by varying either the capacitor or a current, we can change the slope of a voltage that is rising or falling. So we just change the polarity of the current and the magnitude of the current, for example, into a capacitor, and we can basically create this rising or falling slope. So, uh, pretty you know neat little uh, technique, and it's basically the same circuit that's used or used to be used in analog oscilloscopes to generate the sweep voltage to drive the beam across the screen. So we use that same principle here. So let's take a look at some of the underlying pieces that we're going to need to put this all together. But uh, this is kind of the overall kind of concept, if you will, of the circuit. Um, and where we're going to have essentially an adjustable current source that is going to be able to push current out of this node and another constant current source or adjustable current source that can pull current from that node. And we'll have a, a capacitor here that we're going to either charge with this upper current or we're going to discharge with this lower current. And we're just going to switch back and forth between those. And we'll have a little circuit here that will monitor this voltage and then periodically at the right time switch from one current source to the other to charge or discharge the capacitor. So by varying these two uh, currents we can essentially get a rising slope and a falling slope that will vary independently uh, from each other. And we just have this simple circuit that will basically set up two thresholds so that when the voltage drops you know, down to this lower threshold. We flip the switch the other way so that the current, the voltage starts to rise. And when the voltage rises to this threshold, we flip the switch the other way and the cap gets discharged. So that's how the basic circuit works. So let's look at the, what the current sources look like, what the switch looks like, and what the switch control looks like. Okay. So here's some basic current sources. There's lots of ways of building current sources. Here's some really simple ways um, here's the upper current source I called uh, I1 that's kind of pushing current out here that's kind of one one way to implement it uh, I basically have uh, I just turn on a couple of diodes with a resistor here okay and that sets up a, a fixed voltage here with respect to the positive supply basically two diode drops down from the supply we wire in a PNP transistor, we're going to have a diode drop going the other way so that the resulting voltage across this resistor in the emitter is about a diode drop. Okay, so uh, that means that, and knowing that the emitter current and the collector current are basically this, you know, about the same, uh, provided you're not saturating the transistor, then this essentially makes a current source. If we vary this resistor here, we'll vary how much current we have because we essentially have a you know, nearly constant voltage of about a diode drop across there. And, uh, yeah, it's all kind of approximate, but it works. And uh, so we can adjust that current by just changing that uh, resistor value. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the other current, which is more of a current sink, okay, that's the, the same circuit, just turned around using uh, 
NPN transistor. Bias on a couple of diodes, okay? Two diode drops up, one diode drop down. We've got a diode drop across this resistor. We vary that resistor value to vary that current. So those are, those are the two current sources we'll use. Now we need to take a look at what the switch looks like. And this is kind of a cool circuit. And this circuit, uh, what we use is a diode bridge. You might say, well, hey, that looks like a bridge rectifier. Well, and one, you know, that's one way to use, you know, four diodes like this. These diodes are also used in this configuration very often in mixer applications. But here we're going to use it as a switch, and here's how it works. So we'll have a control voltage here that will go either high or low to determine which part of the switch is active. So let's say, for example, the switch control is high. Okay, if the switch control is high, that means that this diode here will be turned on and this current source okay, will basically pull current you know, through from the switch control output through this diode down here. So if this voltage is high, this voltage will be high, presumably higher than the voltage that's appearing at the capacitor, so this diode is not forward biased, it's reverse biased. So in the same situation, when this voltage is high, this diode will be off, Therefore, the current that's coming from this current source can go through this diode and charge up the cat. When the switch control goes low, what will happen now is that when this goes low, this diode gets turned on. This current then flows down this way, okay? Um, and because this voltage is low, uh, that, that this diode is going to be on, this voltage will be lower than the voltage on the capacitor, so this diode gets turned off. Uh, and uh, this, now the, with the voltage here, the current will essentially get drawn off through this diode here, through, that capa through this current source. And this diode essentially will be off since this output's low. So by switching you know, the voltage on this side of this bridge, up or down, we can cause the capacitor to get charged through that path or discharged through that path. So this is just a little electronic switch. So that's our switch that appears right here. Okay, so that's two-thirds of our circuit. So now all we need is a way of controlling uh, that switch. And right, so the last sub-circuit we'll deal with is the switch control. All right, that switch control is made up of a comparator with hysteresis. So let's talk about what that is. A voltage comparator is a, a simple circuit that gives you an output that's high or low depending on whether, you know, on the polarity of the voltage difference at the inputs. Uh, so it basically just says this voltage is greater than or less than the, you know, the reference voltage. Now when we put hysteresis on there, what we're doing is changing the threshold that we're comparing against based on where the output state is. And that happens through positive feedback. So you might look and say, hey, this is drawn wrong. I got some feedback going to the non-inverting input. But that's intentional in this case. We're going to use that to cause a change in that threshold, depending on what the output state is. So um, many times this type of a circuit is used to do a voltage comparison on signals that might have some noise on it. Let me show you where that helps. Let's consider the case where this resistor wasn't here, and we have a, re a resistor divider that simply sets up a single threshold voltage. Let's say that voltage is varying at the input. Let's look at what happens. So consider uh, a threshold that's this very light dashed line right here in the middle. As my input voltage comes in, it may momentarily cross that voltage and go back and go back through that threshold a couple of times as it's moving up, and same thing moving down, causing the output to chatter up and down as we kind of go through that, uh, that threshold uh, on our transitions up and down. So very often, a little bit of positive feedback and hysteresis is added to clean that up. And actually, uh, there's a very common logic circuit called a Schmidt trigger, which does exactly that. Um, that's essentially how a Schmidt trigger works. There's a little bit of positive feedback that's used to adjust the threshold. And the way that works is this. Let's consider the case where the input voltage is very low, okay, lower than the voltage set up here. That would cause the output to go high. If that output goes high, this resistor will essentially appear in parallel to this resistor and thus this voltage here will be a little bit higher than if this was not connected at all. So we can call that VH right here. So as the voltage comes up, the input voltage, once it crosses VH, okay, once that voltage goes above that voltage that's appearing here, 
the output will all of a sudden then go low. As soon as it goes low, this resistor now is going to yank down on this node. Essentially that resistor now appears in parallel with this one. So that this voltage here is going to be lower than it was before. So the threshold voltage drops as soon as that happens. So you can see the effect of that. Any noise and variation on this, once we trip it once, boom, that threshold moves. So this voltage has to come all the way back down even further now, okay, before it causes it to switch back again. So again, this is typically used in logic circuits as, you know, and what a Schmidt trigger does. But we're going to use this to our advantage in this, in this circuit by playing with these resistor values to give us a, you know, a reasonable volt or volt and a half or so swing between VL and VH. And that's essentially what we're going to do here with the switch control. We're going to monitor the voltage on the capacitor. And then when it gets up to VH, that uh, compounder will switch, knock the threshold down to VL. And then the, the switch will go in the opposite direction, will discharge the cap and go back and forth. So that's how we're going to use this uh, in the circuit. So let's uh, put it all together and take a look at it uh, in, as the overall circuit here. So here are the current sources. All right, that I described earlier, uh, relatively you know constant bias on the base of these two transistors, resulting in about a diode drop appearing across these resistors here and here. Uh, I basically put a fixed resistor in series with the potentiometer so that I wouldn't get a whole lot of current flowing when I turned this all the way down to zero. So this kind of places a limit on the on the mag the highest current that I'll get out of the current source. And then the low, the lowest current will be, you know, from the wipers all the way at the other end. And we add these resistors up, and we can play with these values. These are just values I picked to throw the circuit together to demonstrate this. So we have the same thing for I1 and I2. These two currents that I showed here and here. So those are the R2 current sources. I just combined their bias circuits here uh, by essentially having one resistor set the bias current through all these diodes and that sets the voltage for the, the two current sources. Here's my diode switch that we described. Okay, So the, you know, the, we're going to charge the capacitor through this path here or when this voltage is high. We're going to discharge the capacitor through this path here when the switch voltage is low. And here's our uh, comparator with hysteresis. I've set this up with three identical resistors. So what that will do is cause this threshold to move between you know, one-third and two-thirds of VCC uh, when it switches back and forth. Uh, so that's our positive feedback going there, our switch control line coming back here. The voltage on the capacitor is our sawtooth, right? and we're just buffering it with a unity gain buffer here. I actually used a rail-to-rail -rail op amp here instead of a comparator. And for you know, in some cases you can get away with that, particularly lower speed applications, but comparators are generally better you know, for higher speed applications, but for demonstrating this uh, the, this rail-to-rail -rail op amp, it worked just fine. I used all switching diodes, typical 1N4148 or 1N914 diodes in all these cases. It all seemed to work just fine. So this is what the circuit looks like. Let's go take a look at some measurements. So uh, here's the circuit on the breadboard. These are my two current sources here. There's that uh, bias string goes uh, through these two diodes here. There's a resistor down there two more diodes down here across the supply. These are the two resistors in series with the pots. Okay, and these are the two current sources. The outputs come here and here to my little diode switch. This is the switch control input. This is the output of the bridge going to the capacitor that I'm charging or discharging. And then this is the, the dual rail-to-rail -rail op amp that I'm using as the comparator with hysteresis and output buffer. So if we look at the scope screen, that's uh, just the square wave output as buffered by the unity gain buffer. And if I adjust uh, the current sink, the one that's discharging the capacitor, I can cause that you know, falling slope to be very fast when that current is large, discharging that capacitor quickly, or I can cause it to discharge more slowly. Similarly, I can grab the current source from the top, the one that's charging the capacitor, and change the slope of the rising edge. So by playing with those, we can see you know, what happens with that. If we take a look at some of the other voltages here, uh, if I turn on channel 2, channel 2, that's the output from the switch control. So that's the voltage that is coming out here and controlling the switch here. So we can see that uh, 
you know, when we're falling, the switch control is low. When we're rising and charging, the switch control is high. If I turn on channel 3, that's actually the voltage threshold at the comparator input. So we can see that when the voltage goes high, the threshold gets pulled high. That's my new switching threshold. As soon as the voltage gets there, then we change state. The threshold gets dropped lower. We come down here until we cross it again. So we can actually see how all that works. I've also got one of the switch, one of the diode bridge voltages here. And uh, let's see, that's actually the top of the bridge. So this green trace is the one that's uh, essentially right here. All right. And uh, we can see that uh, when we're charging the capacitor, all right, the switch control is high. We're charging the capacitor, with that voltage is just a diode drop above the voltage on the capacitor because we're charging through this diode right here. But then when we're discharging, uh, that voltage just gets dropped down and, and held because now the, uh, the, that current source is just being uh, eaten up, if you will, um, in the other direction by the switch control. So, uh, so that's how the circuit works and uh, kind of a neat uh, circuit to play with. And I thought it would be instructive because uh, it really describes a couple of interesting circuit techniques between you know, current sources, another way of using diodes as switches, as well as using a comparator with hysteresis for uh, some interesting uh, applications here. So I thought, uh, excuse me, I hope you found this uh, enjoyable and instructive. And uh, comments are always welcome, and thanks for watching. See you next time.